Welcome back BC students here to video number two focusing on example two from topic 10.5 the P series and the focus of this video is going to be about determining whether these kinds of series converge or diverge. I think you're going to like this because it's a pretty quick test to pull off. So theorem 10.5a convergence of a p-series says if you've got your p-series the summation as n goes from 1 to infinity of 1 over n to the p that's going to produce of course 1 over 1 to the p plus 1 over 2 to the p etc. Well it's going to do one of two things folks it's either going to converge if that p is strictly greater than 1 or on the other hand, it's going to diverge if that P is less than or equal to 1. Now remember, the P had to be positive as part of the series. And P is never going to be a 0. And I think the reasoning there is because it becomes kind of uh, trivial because P to equaling 0 causes your denominator to be 1. And then you're just adding 1 plus 1 plus 1, which isn't real exciting. It's also not going to converge if you do that forever. So there are your two situations. P greater than 1 converge, P less equal to 1 diverge. Now, I'm going to bring this up because if you go back to your geometric series, and I don't want to confuse you because that's definitely not my goal here. But if you remember for the geo series, we had to do a comparison uh, with R, the absolute value of the ratio R. And we found out that in that particular instance, if r was greater than or equal to 1, we were going to diverge. And then if r is absolute value is between 0 and 1, we were going to converge. Well, if you look, p has the very opposite relationships that r does. And so sometimes that can confuse students. It's about the only thing that really could stand in your way between really being a 100% a, a you know, have mastery of both geometric and p-series tests. So just kind of think about that and make sure that you don't get tricked. So example two, let's determine whether the following series converge or diverge. A, summation as k goes from 1 to infinity of 1 over the fourth root of k cubed. Well, if you're not a fan of the square roots, and let's be straightforward here, I'm not. I don't think that square roots play nicely with calculus at all, so I always like to change those up. So we could call this 1 over k to the 3 fourths power. Now, it's very important that you put the 3 and the 4 in the right spots because that will completely affect your answer here. So the power is the numerator, the index, the root is your denominator. Notice that this p is equal to 3 fourths. 3 fourths is certainly less than 1, and that's going to tell us all we need to know. This series will diverge. In other words, if you tried to add all of these numbers forever and ever and ever, they're just not getting small enough fast enough, basically. And they don't have the uh, potential to add up to a finite value. All right, let's take a look at part B. 1 over n minus 1 squared summation goes from 4 to infinity. Now this one might look a little different in that the denominator consists of n minus 1 and not just our normal n. But you can take the liberty to still equate this to a p-series. And maybe one way to think about that is that if you were to pluck this 4 out and, and plug it in here, you're basically looking at 1 over 3 squared, and then you go to the next number 5, and you get 1 over 4 squared, etc., 1 over 5 squared. And this does have the sort of aura of a p-series. And so it's okay for that minus 1 to be there. And I know that's a little confusing. We're going to see another test later on that if you overlooked the p-series as being a potential test here, you could bail yourself out by maybe comparing this to something. So that's okay. But for right now, this is going to serve as a p-series. And our p would be equal to 2. And we know that 2 is certainly greater than 1. So we have ourselves something that converges. All right, last one. Summation as k goes from 2 to infinity of 1 over e to the k. Well, boy, it kind of gets confusing when you have all these different letters floating around. 1 over e. Well, remember that the base in the p-series here, n, 
is going to match whatever your index is. In this case, it would be K in part C. So I think we have our K in the wrong spot. In fact, if you looked at this in a little bit different vein, maybe you even remember seeing this a few topics ago, we could rewrite the series like this. Now, this has a bit of a different look to it for sure. And the fact that this one over E is a constant could suffice as being our common ratio. And that's exactly what this is. This is a geometric series, everyone. Now, because of that, I guess you don't really have to apply the P-series, but the directions do say determine whether the series converges or diverges, so we're kind of on the hook to still answer it. So it's a great little spiral review to, to let you know that, oh, okay, in this case, our R is 1 over E, and so the absolute value of that 1 over E is certainly going to be uh, less than 1 in this case, and it's also greater than 0, of course. And so that means that we converge. It's a convergent P, uh, geometric series. So it's a great example to see how close a geometric series can look like a P series. And in fact, this would have been a great part D example. So we're going to make our own here. All right? We're going to just do this on the fly. What about this problem? Maybe I'm giving away something here. Maybe this is going to be on the test and I shouldn't do this. What would you say about this? 1 over k to the e power. Well, now we got a p-series, don't we? And in this particular case, the p is equal to e. And e, you have to know, is greater than 1 because e is 2.7. And so this is going to converge by the p-series. So all it takes is just a little bit of a swap with some placement of some pieces. And you have a p-series versus a geometric series. I think you're going to enjoy this test. Definitely one of the easier, easiest ones to master. Still go ahead and practice, work through that skill builder, and you'll get better uh, uh, just within a few problems. And then you'll, like I said, have this down pat. We have one more short video over P-Series. We're going to talk about a special kind of a P-Series. Might even break my guitar out, show you a, a, a way that mathematics and, the, and this particular kind of series can link together. So be sure to check that out. In the meantime, keep practicing. Thanks for joining.